हेलो हेलो डियर लर्नर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल बी अ लर्नर इन माय लास्ट पार्ट वीडियो वी हैव सीन अबाउट द एंडोजेनेटिक मोमेंट्स इन दिस पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी क्लास टेन जोग्राफी सब्जेक्ट एक्सोजेनेटिक प्रोसेस सो लेट इस स्टार्ट एक्सोजेनेटिक प्रोसेस आर यू रेडी ओके लेट्स बिगिन Many landforms are formed due to the internal movements. This we had seen in the endogenetic movements. Few landforms form because of the internal movements which takes place inside the land. Many processes occurring on the earth's surface also lead to the formation or degradation. Formation means forming, degradation means degrading. so formation or degradation of the landforms it happens because of the different process which takes place inside the landforms let us see about the external process external process occurs because of the forces working on the earth surface there are mainly solar energy gravitational force kinetic energy and this all three energies with moving objects makes the forces working inside the earth the external forces are related to the internal changes you can see the pictures in 3.1 they have given the example of exploitation of dome shaped hill whereas in 3.1 b they have given the example of block disintegration In three point one C, they have given the example of shattering, that is mechanical weathering. This is nothing but the exogenetic process which takes place one by one. Now let us see the next one. Breaking or weakening of the rocks is nothing but natural. It is natural. The weathering takes place. It is a big rock. with the help of the winds the rock collide each other and they break into different different pieces and that pieces again break into very small small pieces and thus the soil is formed this is nothing but the weathering process which happens naturally it is a continuous process and that's why a rock it takes more than 1000 years to form a soil and that's why we should protect the soil from the soil erosion breaking or weakening of rocks is nothing but a natural phenomena it is called weathering weathering can be of three types mechanical weathering chemical weathering biological weathering now let us see in detail what is chemical weathering In arid climates mechanical weathering is dominant while in humid climates the chemical weathering is more effective biological weathering occurs because of the living organisms you will notice that just as we can remove each and every outer layer of the onion similarly in the nature rocks undergo such process the exposed part of the rock hits more while the inner part is comparatively cooler as a result the outer layer of the rock fall apart from the main rock this is called exploitation now take a onion in your hand and start peeling one by one so that same happens with the stone but how it happens with the help of weathering with the help of wind it is a natural process mechanical weather weathering mainly occurs because of the following reasons we had studied about the exploitation in first paragraph now next we are going to study how does the mechanical weathering takes place it happens because of five reasons one is temperature another is frost third is crystal growth the fourth one is release of pressure and the last one is water with the help of all this the mechanical weathering takes place now let us see one by one how does the mechanical weathering takes place and what is mechanical weathering before that make sure you have understood exploitation the one which i gave example of onion the same things happen with the stones and rocks let us study the mechanical weathering with the help of temperature now the minerals in the rocks expand because of the heat and contract when the temperature decreases 
Due to such continuous contracting and expanding, tension develops in the rock particles. And when the tension develops, they start the reaction. How it happens in human beings? When exam is coming near, a person gets tension and he starts studying more and more. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't eat, he doesn't play. He starts studying. But same, if he will do little bit study every day, then what will happen? He will not get any kind of tension and he will be perfectly ready for the exams. And he will score good marks. But the human being doesn't do like that. Same happens with the rocks also. Suddenly the tension comes, the wind comes suddenly and the reaction starts taking place. And slowly, slowly the rocks starts breaking with the help of weathering process. Now the tension formed in the rocks also increases, sometimes it decreases. As a result the cracks develop in the rocks and they start to break. Second example we are going to see of mechanical weathering is of frost. You know that the volume of the water increases when it freezes. Frost means you can see your freezer. If you keep a glass of water, within 2 hours the water will get freeze. It becomes a solid. And if you will hit someone with that ice, the person will get hurt very badly. Because it has become like a rock. It freezes and it becomes a very hard material. In the same way, when you will throw that ice, the freezed water on the wall, it will break into pieces. Same happens with the rocks and stones. In the winter season, in polar regions where I continue snow is falling, the rocks, they get freezed and when the weathering takes place, they break into pieces. This was about the second example, frost. Now we are going to see about the third example that is crystal growth. In rocky coast, waves hit the sea cliff. The water is alkaline. Some water droplets hit the crack in the rocks. In this alkaline water, the soluble material in the rock get dissolved. Now crystal growth is about when the sea water just comes and sit on the rock for some time. And the rock starts dissolving because of the alkaline water and slowly slowly the process begins and this is the third example of crystal growth fourth one is release of pressure it is not that the tension is created in the rocks only but the tension is created outside the rocks also the rocks keeps on hitting on each other on other rocks on the walls and this all the process happens when this pressure ceases to exist the lower or the inner layers get freed from the pressure and this also happens just because of weathering so release of pressure was a fourth example next the fifth example is water some areas experience more rainfall some areas experience less rainfall in such areas soaking of rock water also causes weathering like sandstone, conglomerate, this kind of rocks are formed because of the water pressure. So this was all about the mechanical weathering because of the five reasons, temperature, frost, crystal growth, release of pressure and water. Let us repeat, mechanical weathering takes place because of five reasons, which are they? Temperature, frost, crystal growth, release of pressure, water. Very good. Let's go to the next page. In this, they have explained about the chemical weathering. How does the chemical weathering takes place? Few chemicals. Now, uh, take a chalk, piece of a chalk. Just break it. Can you join it again? No. Same happens with the small, small stones. When they are at a great height on the mountains, when they fall down, they break. And this is nothing but the chemical weathering because of the high pressure of the wind. The chemical weathering takes place. Second thing is carbonization. When the rain water, it travels through the atmosphere before reaching the ground, it hits somewhere on the rocks, on the mountains or the hills. It hits there, the rain water. And because of that, the chemical change takes place and this is known as chemical weathering.
the best example of chemical weathering is limestone let us see few more example some minerals in the rock get dissolved in the water limestone is formed due to the chemical precipitation between water and alkalis similarly because of the solution alkali in the rock dissolve and make them brittle you can see the example in 3.7 the next example of this is third example oxidation what is oxidation in oxidation process it happens in the rocks which have iron inside them the rocks which have iron inside them only for that rocks the process of oxidation takes place the rocks becomes reddish in color and then they start rusting and once they start rusting if you keep nail or a wet cloth you will notice something different like a muddy structure on your hand and it happens where there is very high acid rainfall this is nothing but the oxidation and the last one is about biological weathering the first one we had seen mechanical weathering second was chemical weathering the third one is biological weathering besides mechanical and chemical weathering biological factors are also very important for the rocks so let us see about the biological weathering ants you must be knowing ants they make ant hills the rats rabbits mice this all stay inside the burrow in the ground so what this animals are doing they are helping the rocks to convert into the soil they make burrow and it takes lot of time it doesn't happen within a one day or one week slowly slowly they burrow the ground and they make their home even they can cut full the wall also and this animals are very very helpful for biological weathering and that's why these are the examples of biological weathering this all animals make the rock they transform the rock into the soils in this mass wasting is also there let us see what is a mass wasting the weathered rock material start moving alongside the slopes due to the gravity and accumulate near the foothills there are many rocks they gather together and they go and collect down near the foothills near the gentler slope because of the slopes on the mountains they come down and with the help of gravity they go and collect down near the foothills and once they are collected near the foothills the weathered particles start moving from here and there and slowly slowly with the help of other weathering process this rocks are transformed into smaller rock rocks and it happens at a time with the all rocks and that's why this process is known as mass movements mass means more than one or many at a time next the second last part is rapid ma rapid mass movements what is rapid mass movements the rocks which are at the great height which fall suddenly because of the earthquakes or volcanoes in many different villages it happens continuously and that's why it is known as rapid mass movements in some areas where the mountains are little bit slope they are not at great height like a plateau region there this movement takes place slowly and that's why it is known as slower mass movements rapid means fast slower means slow next is erosion it's very important part of the chapter when the rain is falling the soil is covered on the land and when the rain falls heavily it takes away the soil with it and you know it takes thousands of years to convert the rock into the soil so we need to protect it and that's why we should plant trees the roots of the trees catch or hold the roots and the soil very tightly with the help of the roots and the soil doesn't go away with the heavy rains 
it protects from erosion and that's why we should plant trees so that the soil erosion is protected this was all about the chapter exogenetic process part 1 i hope you have understood the chapter read the chapter very carefully read each and every line very loudly when you read the chapter loudly your brain listens and it memorize the things till your exams it is very important to read loudly learn the hard words write down in your notebook i am sure that all my students are practicing vocabulary every day if you have understood the video please click on the like button and subscribe my channel thank you have a great day